Now, as far as I'm concerned, the only shower should be the one inside your motor caravan. But being that this is the last show in the series, we have to work with what's available. In this week's episode, we have some cracking van and site reviews, plus friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. So if you're looking to find out more about buying, owning and getting the most from your motor caravan, then you've come to the right place. When we heard that German manufacturer Sunlight had decided to name its first ever range of van conversions Cliff, there were quite a few smiles raised in the practical motorhome office, as well as numerous jokes made about them being perfect for people going on a summer holiday. But then we took a look at the vans in the metal and we realised just how hugely impressive they actually were, not least because the range starts at less than £40,000. They're so impressive, in fact, that this particular model, the Cliff 601, has just won the Best Budget Motorhome category in our 2018 Motorhome of the Year Awards. To find out why, let's take a look inside. Step into the front of the 601 and you'll see that it's pretty standard van conversion fare. This particular model is based on a 6 metre Fiat Ducato chassis. Behind me is the Fiat Ducato cab. This particular van doesn't have a radio fitted as standard. There is, however, a 12 volt socket and a couple of USB points ready for your mobile phone charging lead. This van is also fitted with a standard manual six-speed gearbox. Both of the cab seats swivel. They're fitted in this brown upholstery, which may or may not appeal to you. There's not a huge amount of headroom up here, but usefully there is a cubby hole up top in which you could store maps or guidebooks to stop them rolling around when you're in transit. To the right of the cubby hole is this control panel. It's pretty basic looking, but it does everything you need and it's really easy to operate. Opposite that, above the kitchen hob, is the control panel for the Truma Combi 4 heating. It's also iNet ready, which means that you can operate it via an app on your smartphone. The two swiveled cab seats are slightly higher up than the two forward facing belted seats, which you can see here. That's because there's a step up into the lounge. Now it's not ideal because it means that if you've got short legs and you're sitting in these cab seats, then your legs do tend to dangle a little bit. That said, the table is pretty good and moves forwards and backwards to reach all of the occupants here. These little spotlights are a particular favourite of mine. All you have to do, if they're not in the right place, is twist them off, stick them where you want them, put them back on again. Van conversions can sometimes feel a little bit compact and slightly claustrophobic inside, but this sliding door in the Cliff 601 really helps to alleviate that. What's more, you can also shut this fly screen blind to keep all the bugs out. Now you wouldn't expect a kitchen in a 6 metre van conversion to be huge, but actually this example is pretty good. There's a decent amount of work surface space if you use this lift up flap at the end. There's also a two burner Dometic hob. And a decent sized rectangular sink with chrome tap. There's no oven or grill in this particular model, but there is excellent storage, thanks to three good sized drawers below the hob and this excellent cupboard. Completing the kitchen equipment is this Thetford 90 litre fridge, which has a removable freezer compartment too. You're never going to lack storage opportunities in this motorhome either. Have a look at this massive wardrobe, it goes all the way back. It's half height as well, with plenty of room for hanging your clothes. There's also a great size cupboard underneath. All of these lockers have positive catches, so they're not going to open in transit either. As you can probably tell, this washroom really is the smallest room. It's not very big at all, not a huge amount of headroom either, so if you're particularly tall, you might struggle. That said, it is pretty well equipped. There's a swivel cassette toilet, there's a decent sized sink, and the tap doubles up as a shower head. There's also this handy fold down rack. Simply pull it down, and you can hang up wet clothes or towels to dry them out. So we've seen the rest of the Cliff 601, but it's towards the back of the van where you'll find its real unique selling point. And that's the fact that it has a bunk double bed. That's right, a bunk double bed. There's one here and one up top. Both of them can hold a pair of adults. This top one is reached via a ladder. And despite the fact it doesn't drop down very low, there's still quite a bit of headroom and it's a nice bright space thanks to this roof light up above. Of course, if there's just the two of you, you don't have to use both of the beds for sleeping. Watch this. All you need to do, move the cushions out of the way, flip this unit up, and you've a through storage way that's just perfect for bikes or any other kit. What's more, it keeps it safe underneath you while you're sleeping. 
So the Cliff 601 is a flexible little motorhome, but it's the price that's really key to this range. It starts at less than £40,000. Even when you add in the few extras that Loudoms has put onto this particular model, you're still only looking at £45,980. For that, you get a great looking, well-built little motorhome that will keep you going for years to come. Hello again. You might remember in part one of this video I showed you how to take the old roof light out of your van. Today we're going to prepare the new light to go in and fit it. Right, first thing I'm going to do is just give that sealing groove, that's where the new sealant's going to go, a white round with a little bit of solvent, just to remove the mould release agents from when it was made. And once I've done that, I'm going to abrade it with a bit of emery paper. That will just make sure that the new sealant gets a good bond, sticks nice and firmly. So I'll just give that a light rub round all the way around. When you're doing this, it's a good idea to put the roof light on some soft paper towel, because obviously it's going to be moving around. If you've got that on a rough surface, you'll scratch the dome, which you really don't want to do on a new roof light. So we'll just give that a clean round. Another wipe with the solvent just to remove the debris from the abrasion. That's it, and that's all nice and clean. A couple of little bits there. The sealant I'm using is a non-setting bedding mastic. It's really sticky stuff. It's quite soft. To apply it, comes in a tube, you put it in a gun like this. What I've done, is cut a V into the nozzle end so that as I now apply it and squeeze it out, it will form about a half inch high 12 millimeter bead that will squeeze down when we put that onto the roof, take up all the imperfections in the roof surface and the frame of this and form a nice watertight seal. It's always the tricky bit turning the corner with this. Take your time over this bit, because this is the, probably the most important part of the job, making sure that you get a good sound bead of sealant onto the job. And another corner. Again, always make sure that you've got something soft under the roof light so you don't scratch it. And wear some gloves because this stuff, it won't hurt you if you get it on your skin, but it takes a lot of getting off, it sticks. One more side. Just overlap it. And when you finish, just, peel, just be very careful that you don't drip a trail of that into the clear dome because it'll make a mess. Right, that's now ready to go back up. So we'll pop that up on the roof and drop it into the hole. So now we're back inside the van. It's not necessarily a two-man job, but it is easier if you've got somebody who can lower the roof light in and somebody inside who can guide it into place. Because obviously with the sealant, it needs to be a one-shot job. We don't want to be moving it around once the seat, once it's sitting on the sealant. So, okay, Tim, if you'd like to pass it down. The thing is, you see, from outside, you can't see that the frame is going into the aperture properly, but from inside, you can. So we'll just gently bed that down onto the adhesive sealant, and the next stage will be to put the fastening clips on to hold it down. So here are the fixing clips, as you can see, four of them are radiused, they're for the corners. Now I'm going to just screw them in a little way with the power driver just to speed the job up. But I'm not going to pull it down tight because I haven't got the sense, the feel with the power driver. I'll do the final tightening with a hand screwdriver. we we'll pop the corners in first. They can be a little bit fiddly to start, but not too difficult. One thing worth bearing in mind when you're doing a job like this is to use the right screwdriver. Many people don't realise that there are two types of crosshead screws. There are Phillips, 
and there's posi drive. If you use the wrong screwdriver type, you can damage the screw. The screwdriver can slip out of the screw and you slip and damage something else or even injure yourself. So it's very important to use the right type of screwdriver for the, the appropriate screw. These are the two screwdrivers. That's a posi drive, that's a Phillips. If you come in close, you can see the difference. The posi driver's got very square, sharp prongs, teeth, if you want. The Phillips has got much more rounded. Now the thing is, the Phillips can cam out. What that means is, as you try to drive the screw, when the screw has reached its limit, the screwdriver can push itself out of the head. Now that means you can slip, you could even stab yourself. So just be aware and use the right screwdriver for the job. So that inserts behind the frame and then locate the screw into the hole. Just screw it in gently. And you may have noticed that there's a second hole in these fixings. This is so that we can put an additional screw in into the roof structure that will hold those fixings firmly in place. They can't slip off and let the roof light come loose. So we just pop a screw up, screw it in. Right, so that's all nicely fastened in now. Now the final stage is to put the inner, inner trim panel. If Tim could pass me that, thank you. Now for this part, an extra pair of hands is a big help because I need to put some screws in to hold this. So if you could join me on the bed for once in your life, Tim. If you can hold that for me and we'll pilot drill. And pop a screw in. The very last pieces are these finishing trims. These go on the sides. So we place that up and slide it into position. That snaps in, that snaps in. And the other side, thank you. That's it. Quick wipe round with a cleaning cloth. Job done. For those of you who think a holiday is about peace and quiet, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, away from the pressures of work, but most importantly away from the children, then Red Kite Touring Park could be just the spot for you. Located in Mid Wales and just a short drive from the A470, this adults only site is surrounded by dramatic rolling hills and stunning Welsh countryside. I think people come here for the peace and tranquility really because that's, that's what we offer. It's, it's out in the middle of nowhere really. We've got a small town about a mile away, 20 minute walk. Um, pretty basic market town, plenty of pubs if you like drinking. But loads for walk, loads of walking and biking and right in the area. But mainly people just come to sit at the side of the caravan and just take in the peace and tranquility. It's a medium sized and very modern park, having only opened in May 2016. There are 66 pitches on site, all fully serviced and hard standing, and all pitches have running water, electricity, and TV hookup points. And unusually, as well as grey waste, each pitch has brown waste disposal for vans using green toilet chemicals. And for those using blue chemicals, there's even an indoor LSAN point, bright and spotless, with hand washing facilities as well. And it's no surprise to learn that the toilet and washing facilities have been nominated for Lou of the Year, because they are superb, with sensor activated flushing toilets, hand basins, and showers. But it's not just for humans. Your pooch can be kept nice and clean as well, with indoor dog washing facilities. And there's even a hairdryer for them. There is no entertainment on the park, but there is a small shop selling all the basics you need. Plus, a very nice touch is the information board outside, with weather reports and lots of ideas for things to do in the local area. Well, we like walking. Walking. Yeah. Um, watching the birds, trying to get the red kites. Yeah, he's trying to <laughs> pho photograph them, aren't you? But trying, they're a bit yeah. sort of, they see his camera and they're off. <laughs> <laughs> they're elusive. 
we like walking. We um, it's handy to go to places like Abu Dhabi and both. Behind me on my left shoulder, you got a road towards uh, Aberystwyth. That's the one I was driving away. Um, behind where you were sitting, there's a lake. Uh, the dog dam. There's a nice lake and walks around that, drives around that. Um, down through the dog walk behind me, you go around the bottom lane, and then there's walks around the mountain. There's, you do what, as as much you like. And if you like to get out, just a short drive from the park is the beautiful town of Clanidloes, with a host of stunning wooden bean shops and houses, and a good range of restaurants and pubs. But if you wanted to travel slightly further afield, then there's a lot of things to do in the area. The Centre for Alternative Technology is worth a visit to discover the latest advances in fossil fuel saving science. And to guarantee seeing a red kite, why not visit the Red Kite Feeding Centre, just 16 miles away? Devil's Bridge Falls is a world famous tourist attraction with stunning scenery and a tea room and gift shop if you need them. That's 30 minutes away. And for a taste of old Wales, you can visit an original slate mine, complete with pit helmets and safety lamps. Oh, there's nothing not to like. It's amazing. Um, it's why we bought a motorhome, sites like this. It's, it's so relaxed, the, the wardens are so lovely, the owners, we didn't even know they were the owners, and they were so lovely really helpful. It's quiet, peaceful, nice location. Facilities are top notch. You get up in the morning, look at the curtain, look at the view you got. I mean, what more do you want than that, don't you? My, doesn't time fly when you're having fun? That's the end of this particular show and indeed for the whole series. And we really hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as we have enjoyed making it. We'll be back soon, but you can keep in touch with us via our website, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, thanks for watching and goodbye.